have you noticed any like sort of improvement like when you've written your jokes from the very first set that you've done it to like even now have you re like noticed any sort of like change in your creative process that makes you go you know huh I th I'm thinking about this way a little quicker. I'm coming with better ways to reword these jokes to come in some sort of rhythm. Like, have you noticed a, like a change that you kind of adapted to be better at a certain aspect of comedy? I mean, I'm definitely a significantly better writer now. I'm definitely good at excluding things I don't need. Like, I, I always tend to add a lot of words um, that don't really add add to the joke. So I'm good at I'm good at cutting out parts like fat of my material mm -hmm. that isn't yeah. needed. So I get uh, less words to get to the punchline, which is definitely needed. Um, I think confidence, like I'm, if I'm, if I'm up there doing the joke, if it bombs, it bombs, but I'm going to do it so hard and so well that mm -hmm. it bombs because they're stupid and they don't get it. Yeah. So, like if I'm saying something, it's like, I've definitely thought this through and I know it's funny and I'm going to give it everything I have. But sometimes when I've done jokes in the past, I'm just like, I mean, I've always done a good job, but I haven't done it a thousand percent, especially if I couldn't. Like my main thing is memorization. If I don't have it f memorized just the way I want it uh, and I have to think about it, sometimes I don't go as hard on the joke. So my main thing I need is to just have it down exactly word for word the way I like it. And that's why it's so important to cut out the fat of the bits I am trying to do is so I can just have every word I need memorize it the way I want and then really fucking, you know, deliver Kill my punchlines well. Yeah. And uh, the harder I do it, the harder they laugh. And sometimes um, if they don't laugh right away because they're shocked, I'll just stare at them and then they'll don't laugh. Worry. Oh, yeah, because they're kind of scared to laugh because a lot of my stuff is dark. Yeah. And then when I give it time to settle, then then they kind of release that tension with laughter. And I, it's kind of like massaging like uh, Wagyu beef, you know, and I have to massage the cow a little bit, make it tender. Yeah. I kind of have to tenderize my audience to make them accustomed to, oh, I'm bringing it. Everyone else here is kind of, you know, they do a lot of woke stuff or mm -hmm. they. They're scared Shocking. to really go all, all for it. And they have to, they have yeah. to realize I'm coming on stage and I'm different than everyone here. So I'm, I'm kind of bringing it. But yeah. And then do you think when you get more and more, like, more bigger, or I should say more big, if you want to be a grammar Nazi, do you, would you start incorporating your audience into your jokes or is that more of like a kind of a feel in the moment kind of thing like i feel like if i was a stand-up comedian for me like if if i would get the audience involved if i am like blanking on like my next joke like if i have a massive brain fart mm -hmm. and i don't want to like just have this dead air i feel like then i'd kind of make a joke towards someone in the audience so you're saying like you crowd work to, yeah would are you going to be a comedian like when you get bigger would you like to introduce crowd work into your prepared work or do you kind of be like yeah i'll just do it like on the fly if i feel it or personally i don't i don't I'm not really, I don't think, a crowd work comedian. I think I'm a little bit more like Louis C.K. or uh, Tom Segura or George Carlin or something like that. I'm more of a kind of a scripted kind of person. Yeah. Like I, want, I have a way I want to say things that I know is funny and I want to get it. It's almost like I want to get something out of me. Like I'm putting on a show and mm -hmm. you're here to listen to it. Like I'm, this yeah. is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, there are definitely good crowd work comedians like Andrew Schultz, who is a master at his craft of both stand-up and crowd work. I think trying crowd work would be fun. I've never really done too much of it. I've gotten some heckles before, and I'll just kind of like acknowledge it, like, yeah. I've gotten actually really good heckles. I've been lucky. Mm -hmm. Like they, uh, yeah. People have chimed in at the right moment with some stuff I might even add to my act. I'm like, oh, that was actually really good. Um, but I, I'd probably start to do a little crowd work if I got a heckle I didn't like. And I'd mm -hmm. probably put them down pretty hard. Yeah. So part I guess of me is I, worried because I go so hard that I don't know if I can get everybody back on my side. Yeah. Or I don't want to make I, anyone I guess like, does. feel bad either. So. Yeah. I guess it does make sense that it's in a kind of in the moment kind of thing. So you really can't prepare for crowd work because you can't like prepare like, oh, yeah, those girls are going to like wear this really ugly purple top. So I'm going to call well, her. That's like, the other I'm thing. The lights are in your eyes and they're really bright. Yeah. 
and I, yeah. you can't fucking see anything out there. Yeah. Well, that's my next question. The front because... row, so it's like if someone heckles me from the back, I'm just going to, you know, you can't do much. So. Yeah. Well, that's like my next question is that like I've seen like David Spade. I wanted to go see David Spade when he came down here, but it was very last minute. The tickets were really expensive. He His stage is more of like a circular, like a, a, a circle in the middle. And it's a good, like people sit around him and he kind of walks around. Well, it's not his stage. That's just where he's going to tour. Like, that, that's the venue. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then you have like just the regular stage, like, you know, in the fucking junior high cafeteria. <laughs> Do you see like any sort of benefit? Like, I mean, I wonder if there's like, there has to be some sort of comfort. Well, I, mean, I would benefit. love to have the big circular stage with, you know, a couple yeah. thousand people. But, but, but I mean, also like, would you, but would you also prefer though for you personally to just have like, be on the stage and you just have everybody in front of you because I think it'd be a less moving for you. You don't have to worry less about moving, you know, trying to work around the circle to catch everybody at least, you know, with your improved vision and everything. Everyone's just right in front of you. You don't have to worry about the 360, but I guess obviously that's the venue. You oh, no, I'd definitely be up for trying but... any kind of venue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it would be fun. I, I like I like experimenting and having new new things thrown at me. But especially mm -hmm. like when you're working out new material, I think most comedians would agree with this is that you try it at smaller clubs. And then as you are more confident in it and you get it just the way you like it and you're done, you're like, I think I'm pretty much done editing this bit. And then you're yeah. like, oh, I'm comfortable to then go around and tour with it or have more people listen to it versus like, you know, a hundred or a couple hundred people in a club hear it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and I also think like also to help as a comedian would be like you seem to be like I, I, at least you know with Ronnie Dangerfield he was kind of animated with his hands, but he never really like moved back and forward. He'd always kind of just stand still. Like Robin Williams is always moving. Like yeah, George Lopez moving. You now everyone is like moving. Are you going to be like I don't know like if there's any sort of like benefit from moving to sitting or standing. Well, Are you I, like getting more comfortable? Are you going to kind of slowly roll back and forth kind of like you know kind of you know moving around a little bit kind of i don't know if it helps like the brain move a little bit like you kind of like no definitely movement, moving though. especially for me i've always like you know because i'm not always in my wheelchair i can uh crawl around on my knees yeah. with my disability i can mm -hmm. still kind of yeah. move around carpet and stuff so but i always find that if i'm upright and not sitting my brain just works a lot better and that's why people use standing desks and stuff yeah. um but even if i'm in my wheelchair and i'm not sedentary i'm like moving around in my power chair there's something about movement that does help you uh think uh yeah so i, I wish i could I, move more yeah. but i'm afraid that when i do move on stage the wheels and this has happened to me before in different settings is like my wheels get caught in cords <laughs> and i don't want something to happen and then you know fucking people have to come out and help me try and fix it and it interrupts the whole show and then i waste my stage time so Currently, yeah, I don't, I don't move much. I'll stay sedentary in my chair or stationary, and then I'll like move around in my chair, like me physically, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, or I'll make hand gestures or faces or, you know, like when I do my cum joke, I roll my head back and I... Yeah, I feel like doing that would kind of help people kind of laugh. Like you being very animated, like Italian. I do like, like to Italian, be animated, very, I do. Yeah. This is being in a wheelchair, it's a little bit harder. Yeah, so, things, um, I've noticed that a lot. So, I feel like there is like some sort of benefit from moving. Like I said, there's also some people who just sit there, you know, kind of just sit there and they just kind of have like a come, like a, it's not almost like they're telling jokes, they're telling like funny stories. And that's why I kind of feel like when someone's sitting down and moving around, I feel like I'm just listening to someone tell me a funny story instead of an actual joke. Because when they sit down, it's right. more like casual, more like, okay, I think this dude's reading me a bedtime story. Like, it's supposed to be funny. You know, but at least with, like with you or like if Rob Williams, like I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention because he's keeping me like on my toes because he's moving. Like, so I'm like, move, well, I'm tracking him. So I'm getting more into it than I would be just to do just standing there because this is more. Right. Well, I mean, it makes sense, especially with people with AD, ADHD, right? Like you, yeah. like you need yeah. things always happening. That's why even now you have the fucking football in the background. You always have to have something going on, which yeah. I understand. Um, even with like, I mean, people's attention spans are so short. When I'm cutting up our shorts and and yeah. for TikToks and everything, like you have to have the letters moving every two seconds, fucking zooming in on faces. It has to be so fast paced to keep just anybody's goddamn attention. Yeah. So that's our world now, Sally. People can't just like listen to stuff. So I get where you're coming from. 
And yeah. I mean, even no matter what, it does help to be animated. So yeah. I want to, yeah, I'm still working out my style with certain things. It depends on the bit too, you know. Um, yeah. I think I'm, I'm animated to a degree, but I'm not like Robin Williams level where I'm pacing well, back because on the stage. No one else is Robin Williams. So Robin coke. Williams is like, yeah, Robin Williams was like 16. He was able to fucking move around like a 23-year-old. Like he was just moving around. He had the energy. Like he had energizer buddy. Someone shoved double A energizer batteries up his ass. And he was able just to move around. Like my favorite bit ever of Robin Williams is when he's talking about golf. Yeah. And he literally is just so animated. He does so many different like impersonations. And he's moving around. I'm like, Dude, like, how is it? This is perfect. Like, if I was doing all that and trying to do all those accents, I know for a fucking fact I'd stir a word, I'd mess up some sort of bit. But I guess if that's just the experience that he has. I, I could be, but I mean, he's, like, a, just, he's one of the legends. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a but point just, where you get so, I mean, he was naturally, obviously, a funny person. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, I think, and he had that energy. But I think just over time, he was so experienced that. He had the confidence and the memorization skills to just keep firing and going and pacing and you know yeah. he was just that legendary of a comedian he could do that. Yeah, like, I do, I do, I'm just, more about see, I'm more of a George Carlin where I like to have every word memorized a certain way. Most comedians aren't like that, especially today. Most yeah. comedians um, they have a general idea of what they're going to talk about and they kind of mm. meander through their ideas. And eventually get to their punchline or whatever. I, I'm like Carlin, where I want to have every word memorized, which is very hard. It's a you just a one man show needed. monologue essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. So of but course, I like to but, do every but challenging comedy, thing ever. Stand up comedy is like almost writing a paper or writing a book. That like having one word or missing a word can literally change an entire set, like an yes. entire bit that you're pitching. It can change an entire sentence of a story. Like it literally matters. So like it is hard, but the fact that you need to memorize your words is important because if you th miss like an is or an am, like you don't know, like just an is in there could really get the crowd. Popping. With, with the way I so write, kind of every word matters with the way I write. Yeah. Some people, yeah. like I say, who just meander, as long yeah. as they get to their punchline, they, it doesn't really necessarily matter. And those, yeah. there's some, especially when you're telling stories, I think I might be more that way if I'm telling a longer story mm -hmm. um but when i'm writing and putting together uh like bits and jokes about a topic especially more observational yeah. stuff or whatever and it's not a personal story then i'm more word for word but if it's a mm -hmm. personal story i'm i'm gonna be letting it flow a little bit more